you are informed. Anubisanpu is the god of death. And funeral according to ancient Egyptian mythology. He is the son of Set and Nephthys. Jackal-headed Anubis is associated with death. Because jackals wander on the graves, he became the god of mummification because he embalmed. Osiris, who was later killed by Set, his mission is to protect and glorify all the dead. That's why people in charge of mummification wore Anubis masks. While the deceased is being judged in the other world, Anubis helps him. Anubis is the protector of the dead in the other world, and the lord of the city of the dead. Anubis is one of the most respected among the ancient Egyptian gods. It is also thought that it has the ability to bring the dead back to life. There is a coyote bite on his face, also known as the sacred embalmer. Although Anubis is mostly known as the god of the underworld, Osiris has been ruling the duet underworld since his death at the hands of Set. Anubis is a guardian to the world of the dead. The reason why Anubis has a jackal head is that jackals wander on the graves. Since the tombs concern Anubis, he is depicted with a jackal head. The mark of Anubis is seen in almost all tombs. According to ancient Egyptian belief, Anubis is known to have the power to protect graves. That's why Anubis statues were placed at the entrance of the tombs to protect them. He weighs his heart which represents the soul of the dead, and the feather of man, the goddess of justice, on his scales. The heart of a good man is light to a feather, and sends the soul of the dead to the sky to be reborn again. If he is someone who has done evil, that is a feather in the cap. In which case that person's soul is sent to the underground country to the snakes. This means eternal torment. Anubis was one of the most well-known Egyptian gods, while weighing the heart of the dead against the feather of truth, Anubis would help Osiris decide who would go to the afterlife. Anubis' role was to guide the dead through the underworld, giving him special importance among the Egyptians, more than life on earth. What interested them was the afterlife in the land of Osiris, the god of the underworld. Anubis was respected by those who wanted to be judged as clean in all these deaths so that they could easily go to the other world. Anyone whose heart weighed less than or equal to the feather of righteousness was offered to Osiris in the underworld. Additionally, Anubis was known as the inventor of embalming, which prevents the body from decomposing. The soul of a mummified Egyptian could re-enter the body it was in before. As soon as it was judged, if Anubis did not protect the body there, there would be no salvation, and therefore no afterlife. Anubis was often depicted in human form, with the black head of a jackal or wolf. This feature must have been a representation of the many wild dogs roaming around the cemetery. They were noted as unofficial guardians of the cemeteries, and were later linked to the dog-headed Anubis. Anubis was usually depicted striding or standing, but he was sometimes shown in full animal form, lying or crouching on the ground. Also in black. He may have been bent over a coffin shaped like an Aos. The temple containing statues of gods found in Egyptian temples. Anubis was a protector of graves and cemeteries. Several epithets attached to his name in Egyptian texts and inscriptions referred to that role. Kentia meant you which means for most of the Westerners and was also the name of a different canine funerary god. Alluded to his protecting function because the dead were usually buried on the west bank of them. Now, he took other names in connection with his funerary role, such as Tipi Jufi who was upon his mountain eye keeping guard over tombs from above, and Nebtajis or Lord of the Sacred Land, which designates him as a god of the desert necropolis. The Jumalhat Papyrus recounts another tale, where Anubis protected the body of Osiris from Set. Set attempted to attack the body of Osiris by transforming himself into a leopard. Anubis stopped and subdued Set, however, and he branded Set's skin with a hot iron rod. Anubis then flayed Set, 
and wore his skin as a warning against evildoers who would desecrate the tombs of the dead. Priests who attended to the dead wore leopard skin. In order to commemorate Anubis' victory over Set, the legend of Anubis branding the hide of Set in leopard form was used to explain how the leopard got its spots. Most ancient tombs had prayers to Anubis carved on them. By the late Pharaonic era 660 for 2332 BC, Anubis was often depicted as guiding individuals across the threshold from the world of the living to the afterlife. Though a similar role was sometimes performed by the cow-headed Hathor, Anubis was more commonly chosen to fulfill that function. Greek writers from the Roman period of Egyptian history designated that role as that of psychopomp, a Greek term meaning guide of souls that they used to refer to their own god Hermes, who also played that role in Greek religion. Funerary art from that period represents Anubis guiding either men or women dressed in Greek clothes into the presence of Osiris, who by then had long replaced Anubis as ruler of the underworld. One of the roles of Anubis was as the guardian of the scales, the critical scene depicting the weighing of the heart. In the Book of the Dead, shows Anubis performing a measurement that determined whether the person was worthy of entering the realm of the dead the underworld, known as Due, by weighing the heart of a deceased person against man. He was often represented as an ostrich feather, and Anubis dictated the fate of souls. Souls heavier than a feather would be devoured by a man, and souls lighter than a feather would ascend to a heavenly existence. Anubis was one of the most frequently represented deities. In ancient Egyptian art, he is depicted in royal tombs as early as the First Dynasty. The god is typically treating a king's corpse providing sovereign to mummification rituals and funerals, or standing with fellow gods at the weighing of the heart of the soul in the Hall of Two Truths. One of his most popular representations is of him, with the body of a man and the head of a jackal with pointed ears, standing or kneeling, holding a gold scale, while the heart of the soul is being weighed against Matt's white true feather. In the early dynastic period, he was depicted in animal form, as a black canine, Anubis's distinctive black color did not represent the animal. Rather it had several symbolic meanings. It represented the discoloration of the corpse after its treatment with natrin and the smearing of the wrappings with a resinous substance during mummification. Being the color of the fertile silt of the river Nile. To Egyptians, black also symbolized fertility and the possibility of rebirth in the afterlife. In the Middle Kingdom, Anubis was often portrayed as a man with the head of a jackal. The African jackal was the species depicted, and the template of numerous ancient Egyptian deities, including Anubis. An extremely rare depiction of him in fully human form was found in a chapel of Ramesses II in Abydos. Anubis is often depicted wearing a ribbon and holding an C3Q3 flail in the crook of his arm. Another of Anubis's attributes was the J.M. Wyft or Emiat fetish, named for his role in embalming. In funerary contexts, Anubis is shown either attending to a deceased person's mummy or sitting atop a tomb protecting it. New Kingdom tomb seals also depict Anubis, sitting atop the nine boughs that symbolize his domination over the enemies of Egypt. Although he does not appear in many myths, he was extremely popular with Egyptians and those of other cultures. The Greeks linked him to their god Hermes, the god who guided the dead to the afterlife. The pairing was later known as Hermanubis. Anubis was heavily worshipped because, despite modern beliefs, he gave the people hope. People marveled in the guarantee that their body would be respected at death, their soul would be protected and justly judged. If you would like to see videos on these topics, please leave comments. Goodbye. You are informed.